Hollow Knights. Hello everyone, let's start! Gala Nagosa? Aha! Your staff found where the spiders are coming from! Eat aerosol, you eight legged freaks! Internet, welcome to Game Theory. Hello. We may not be insects, but we sure do bug a lot of people. Now, let me say this up front right now. You should play Hollow Knight. This game is long overdue for some attention. It is one of the best, most polished games to have been released over the last few years, and yet it's mostly gone under the radar here on YouTube, overshadowed by larger releases or bigger indie hits like Cuphead. But let me tell you, if you're a fan of Metroidvania style games where you uncover new powers and secrets over sprawling maps, all while proving your mastery over tight gameplay and massive boss battles on the platform then this platform all games this style of games is really awesome just give it a try thank you so much game is a must play i love it so much i played every inch of this thing from the optional side missions to the brutally difficult boss rushes it was oh. so so good and when i finally got to the end of the game i had literally no idea what the story was about okay so that's a bit of an over exaggeration but not by much i think most people get to the end of this thing see the final boss's title card come up as the hollow knight and have a moment of surprised realization as it dawns on them oh i guess i'm not playing as the Hollow Knight then. Interpreting the lore of this thing is like interpreting Shakespeare. Warily shall we accept the will of the worm. Its prescience shields us. Who knew bugs could speak all fancy like? And that line is the easy mode for the game's dialogue. If you're looking for god tier difficulty, then you've also got stuff like this. Their yoke abba absence outer shallow gate contain lightum vessel um egg um seal within dreamer in twixt a twixt. Seriously, who wrote this in-game dialogue? Um, I'm just really, um, 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 what? <laughs> okay. Chaucer? Yeah, that is a Canterbury Tales reference in the middle of your silly video game show. Because game theorists, we're cultured. Because game theorists, we're cultured. <laughs> I like mean, it. Because game theorists, we're cultured. But in all seriousness, this game hides even its most basic story behind secret lore tablets and a layer of literary analysis. It's like the Dark Souls of story. It is! Forgive me for comparing it to a video game that's a pioneer in this sort of storytelling. It's just accurate. That said, by the final boss, I had been able to piece together a lot of the basics just from my casual playthrough. This is what you need to know to start off with. The insect-filled kingdom of Hallownest gets plagued by some brain-melting infection, and a ruler named the Pale King sacrifices one of his sons to contain it. This oh. is the Hollow Knight, who then gets himself sealed away with the help of three guardians called Dreamers. But the Hollow Knight wasn't quite as hollow as intended. It was, as the game says, tarnished by an idea instilled, which in turn allowed the infection he was meant to contain to start leaking out. Our job then, as the knight, not to be confused with the hollow knight, can't see how that would have been confusing, is- Oh, <laughs> The knight, the hollow knight, but, but, the game title, the hollow knight, refers to- mm, uh, What? 
to return to Hallownest and end the infection once and for all, either by absorbing it into ourselves, replacing the Hollow Knight, or, in the game's true ending, entering the mind of the Hollow Knight and actually killing the source of the infection, a giant oh. moth god named the Radiance. There's a lot more to it, a lot, and we'll be digging a bit deeper as this theory goes on, but suffice it to say, the channel Mossbag did an excellent 45 minute video on Hollow Knight's lore, and it's still didn't cover everything. Long story short, this game is dense. Kind of like the works of Chaucer. This is dense. It's also quite deep. Well, excuse me for taking a break from video oh, games to take me. a minute to appreciate the Middle English heroics of the 14th century peasantry. As we all should do from time to time. Clerk's tale's not gonna read itself after all. In fact, no one would read this effing thing if it wasn't for English class. Look at how huge it is! So then, what's the theory here? Well, the game would have us believe that we're playing as just this random knight. The infection causes bugs to lose their will and become part of this greater hive mind. So to defeat it, the Pale King needed to create a completely empty vessel. Something with no will, no desire, no nothing that could be corrupted by this infection. But as you can imagine, that's gonna be pretty hard to do. And so in his attempts to give rise to a true truly empty vessel, the Hollow Knight from the game's title, thousands of other failures are made in the process. Oh. Something that we see as we fight our way through the section of the game called the Abyss. We are supposedly just another one of those failed experiments, except I don't think that's the case here. If you stop and dig through the massive amounts of secret lore hidden throughout this game, it's my belief that we're not just some random nobody. We are, in fact, royal. The king. Oh. The king in fact. It's my belief that in Hollow Knight, we're playing as the Pale King himself. A Pale King who has transformed, whose memory has vanished, and who is drawn back to Hollow Nest to release his trapped son, all in an attempt to atone for the mistakes that he made in dealing with infection the first time around. If this is true, it would have huge ramifications for the story of this game. And so stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We've got ourselves a chitinous case of secret identity to crack. Oh, so we are not the knight, we are the king! Yay? I guess... The first clue that our knight might be special happens immediately. Throughout the game, we're presented with lore tablets, each one beginning with the words, Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Now, what is a higher being in Hollow Knight? Well, it's a term reserved only for gods or creatures coming close to being gods. According to a Reddit AMA with the developers of the game Team Cherry, they exist above all others in this world. For instance, one of the most important items in the game is the King's Soul Charm, which is needed to unlock the game's true ending. Its description reads, holy charm symbolizing a union between higher beings. The union it's referencing is between the Pale King and his queen, the White Lady. So the oh. fact that we're able to read words that are specifically set aside for higher beings alone certainly makes it seem like we too might be in the ranks of a higher being. But okay. it's not just our ability to read these tablets that matters. The first tablet of the game teaches the higher beings how to use soul energy, a special ability that they apparently have. A special ability which also happens to be a primary gameplay mechanic for our lowly knight throughout his quest. The tablet even says, quote, you shall achieve feats of which others can only dream. Again, setting apart soul users, like our knight, from pretty much every other creature that we encounter throughout this game. So not only are we reading tablets reserved for higher beings, but we're also using skills reserved for the godlike creatures of the world world on par with the Pale King. Does it really sound like we'd just be some failed experiment cast into the depths of this world? But let's rewind even- mm, That might be a possibility, but the possibility might- uh, I, I see your point, I see your point, I see your point. Maybe we are royalty further back, even before the tutorial section of this game, because the clues as to your true identity start at the first press of a button. Hollow Knight 
is a long game, so it's really easy to forget the things that start off your quest. But it's worth noting that when you start a new game, the very first thing that you see, the thing the developers thought was most important for anyone starting their quest, wasn't a cutscene, wasn't a tutorial, it was a poem. In wilds beyond, they speak your name with reverence and regret. For none could tame our savage souls, yet you the challenge met. Under palest watch you taught, we changed, base instincts were redeemed. A world you gave to bug and beast as they had never dreamed. You don't know it when you start the game, but this poem is about the Pale King. Let's break it down 11th grade English style, shall we? Under Palest Watch is the most obvious. Pale King, Pale Watch, duh. But what's all this about uh. taming savage souls and redeeming base instincts? Well, it's a reference to how the Pale King was able to give bugs a mind of their own. In the beginning of the game's lore, all bugs were basically a hive mind controlled by the moth god Radiance. The Pale King was the one who expanded the minds of bugs. Give Giving them individuality oh. and sapience, showing them, as the poem says, a world that they had never dreamed. It's important to note, too, that this isn't just a poem about the Pale King, but it's directed to the Pale King. Your name. You the challenge met. And then what do we see appear on screen just moments later? Our knight. It would be one thing if the poem was just about the Pale King, but the fact that it's directed at him just seconds before we actually see our character makes it seem like the designers are drawing a parallel between this King of Legend and our first appearance on screen. We are the you in that poem. Speaking of overanalyzing text, the first NPC you meet in the game is Elderbug, the lone resident of a fading town named Dirtmouth, which basically serves as your primary hub for the rest of the game. Elderbug starts the game alone, sadly lamenting the fact that everyone he once knew has descended down into Hallownest and never returned, either dead or with their minds consumed by the infection. He says, quote, Well, glory, enlightenment, that darkness seems to promise all things. I'm sure you too seek your dreams down there. Oh gosh, it's like they got corrupted. They lost their moral compass. They lose sight of their low star. Their minds was... They lost themselves. They got trapped in that delusion. The delusion, the illusion in front of them. And I'm also worried that I will become that one day. I'm talking to you. I'm worried. I'm genuinely worried. Alright, let's continue. The reason I call this out is that it's a really clever play on words. The usage of the word dreams is important, since at the beginning of the game, not knowing the lore of this world, we all assume it's just our knight pursuing the dream of wealth or fame just like the elder bug says, but late in the game, we get ourselves an item called the Dream Nail, which is how we unlock memories of the past and ultimately defeat the Radiance inside the mind of Hollow Knight. It's also the tool that allows us to find the Pale King's White Palace. It is a place that is literally hidden in dreams. So like Elderbug says, we are seeking our dreams in perhaps a very literal sense, which is especially true if we are playing as the Pale King. Elderbug oh also has special dialogue that triggers if you don't speak to him at the top of the game. If you ignore him and only speak to him after you've already started your quest, he'll say this. Oh, you're back. You walked straight past me and descended down into the ruins without even saying hello. I thought maybe I'd seen a ghost. If we are indeed the Pale King returning to a land that we once abandoned, we would indeed be a ghost from the past. It's another potentially really clever play on words that I appreciated. Am I reading too much into this? Maybe but again, this is clearly a team who has themselves a literary flair and who like to make you really think about the words that they're using. But even Shakespeare had to get explicit sometimes and just spell out what he was trying to say. Same here with Team Cherry. While the poems and Elderbug dialogue are a bit vague and open to interpretation, other characters are definitely a bit more explicit. True, if uh, there's like too vague and too explicit. So there's like a difference of course, like too vague or too explicit, you know. Different sides. Different sides. During one of your interactions with the white lady, the white lady, aka your wife, the nigga speaking, aka the queen, she outright says to the knight, Is it more than just a vessel? 
I feel like once again I'm in the presence of my beloved Worm. Worm being another name for the Pale King, and she's not the only one who gets kingly vibes from the player character. The White Defender. Another White. Oh wait, wait. it's not a White. Yeah, it is a White. One of the Pale King's five main knights also has interesting dialogue. Quote, Your noble bearing reminds me of our dear king. So that's two of the king's closest relations being reminded of their dearly departed when they interact with us. But you know what they say, actions speak louder than words. And if that's the case, then these bugs hanging out in the remains of the Pale King's castle flat out bowing to you when you approach them is just screaming that you're the king. It's also worth pointing out the description for these royal retainers in the hunting log that says that they are the most loyal and devout servants of the king. And they are literally bowing to you, the player. You are the king. You are like, you literally are the king. Hey! 10 out of 10 royal retainers can't be wrong. You are royalty, plain are royalty. and simple. Which means that it's time to talk about the pale king himself. For as weird as it might seem for me to say that this guy is the same as this guy, it is clearly established in the lore that the king has the ability to transform. In fact, the pale king form is actually his version 2.0. To see his first form, you need to trek into the snowy reaches of the kingdom's edge. You see that? That's not a cave. That's the remains of the king 1.0, a oh. giant ancient worm creature. And all that snow in kingdom's edge? It's actually his body just flaking away as it decays. But it'd be one thing to just establish that the worm became the Pale King, it's another thing entirely to allude to there potentially being a third form of him. And yet, here it is in a line from the character Bardoon. This ashen place is grave of worm. Once told, it came to die. But what is death for that ancient being? Or transformation, methinks. This failed kingdom is product of the being spawned from that event. So Bardoon knows the Pale King spawned out of the worm, he clearly says that the kingdom is his doing, but this line of more transformation seems to imply that the Pale King's death would only lead to yet another form. It's like evolution. Like, it doesn't really die, it sort of just transform. Hmm, evolve maybe? Do we think that Team Cherry put this line in here for no reason? I think not. Speaking of the Pale King's multiple lives, we also know that he was experimenting with a substance known as Void before he died. Now, a quick note here. Void is the liquid embodiment of darkness in Hollow Knight. It's an ancient force that opposes the blinding light of Mothra over here, oh. and is primarily found in the dark reaches of the Abyss. So it's some ancient, powerful, magical stuff. Stuff that the Pale King was starting to unlock the potential of. In his hidden workroom in the White Palace, there's a lore tablet that reads, quote, Void, yours is the power opposed, but yours is potential, eternity potential, force that could deny time, void, harness shall be placed upon you. This quote is interesting. Based on the clues in that workroom, as well as the game's bestiary, we know that the Pale King was using void to create soldiers, the king's molds and wings molds that populate his White Palace. We also know that he was using void to create the vessels in intended to trap the infection. Vessels like the Hollow Knight, which would also include our character. But this quote is referencing what? him using the Void for yet another purpose. A third purpose. Not fighting the Radiance, not protecting his castle, but instead fighting time itself. He wants to use the Void to achieve eternal life. For himself? For his kingdom? It's unclear, but it once again gives credence to the idea that in his next life, he would choose to rebirth himself as a Void-based creature. One not bound by the restrictions of time. One just like our knight. Making this connection even more interesting. Wow, that's incredible. That might actually make sense. Are the eggs. Just outside the Pale King's throne room is a lore tablet housed inside of a black egg, a tablet that speaks of the ancient worm becoming the Pale King. It seems to suggest that this egg here is where version 1.0 of the Pale King transformed to 2.0 hatched into its upgraded form as it were. And now look at the birthplace of our knight down in the abyss, a similar black egg. Could it be where version 2.0 transformed yet again? From 2.0 become 3.0. That might be a possibility. That might be a possibility. Huh, interesting. Further linking the two is the fact that elsewhere in the White Palace, there's a nursery playing this song on the music box.
which just so happens to be the same song that plays when you die and stand next to the shade from your former life. basically this game's version of Bloodstains. Here's the interesting thing about that detail. The description of these shadows reads, Echo of a previous life. Each of us leaves an imprint of something when we die. True. A stain on the world. So the sound that accompanies our knight's past life coincides with the same sound from a nursery housed inside the Pale King's palace? The existence of a connection between our knight and the Pale King seems undeniable. It's almost True. as if the king laid the groundwork for him to be reborn as void, died, was hatched of void from the black egg in the abyss, was taken back to the palace to be raised, and was eventually sent away from the kingdom to avoid succumbing to the infection, only to be called back when he was older and when the Hollow Knight started losing control. No cost oh. too great is a line that we see repeated a lot by the Pale King, and it's thought to be referring to his sacrifice of his children in pursuit of the perfect Hollow Knight. However, there is another interpretation here, that the cost is to himself. Humble in appearance, comprised of void, a force that is completely opposite himself, he leaves his regal body behind to take the form of a lowly, nameless knight, our player character. He chooses to reincarnate himself into the form that is most appropriate to defeat the infection, but the cost is that he loses himself in the process, but it's all in pursuit of helping his son and his kingdom. That's why we see him thinking the line, no cost. That's so nice. So selfless, helping other, care for one another. too great on the throne where he died. It is his last thought as he passes on to his next transformation. It's not just about the cost of sacrificing his children, it's the cost of sacrificing himself. It's a calculated risk he's making. The knight being a reincarnated pale king would explain how a nameless, faceless knight is so easily able to accept the king's brand item, which outright marks him as a king. It would explain how, just like the pale king snapped the bugs out of their collective stupor during his lifetime, our knight, as you go through the game, is doing exactly the same thing, waking up bugs from the infection and getting them to return to a life in dirt mouth. It would explain how only you and the Pale King are seen to use the Monarch Wings item. And if all of that wasn't enough to convince you, in cut dialogue that was data mined from the game, if you dream- Unused dialogue. The cut dialogue. Now that's super meta. Like, that's so much you do into it, so much research. That's awesome. Respect, man. Nailed the final boss, the Hollow Knight himself. It will say this, Father? doesn't get much more explicit than that. So in short, if this theory holds true, Hollow Knight isn't about some random knight doing his duty, it's about a king's redemption. He picks a son to sacrifice to this infection, but before he can offer him up, they bond, which ruins the purity of the son as vessel. This in turn gives the infection something it can corrupt, the desire to be loved, to be with its father. Knowing that not only is he offering up his son, but also that this plan is now bound to fail because of his own weakness, the king is filled with regret, and eventually comes to realize that he's the one who will need to make things right. He studies the void so that he's eventually able to be reborn with its power, hatching down in the abyss, getting cared for in the safety of the White Palace, and then being released out into the lands beyond Dirtmouth place where canonically bugs lose all their memories. This self-exile for a period of years is probably for two reasons. One, his own protection from the radiance, and two, losing his memory helps make him purely hollow. No memory, no desire, no past life. He's now an empty vessel so that, should it come down to it, he can now be the one to take on the Hollow Knight's place. Along the journey, he unknowingly assembles the kingly items that once belonged to him. He prompts flashes of memory from his former friends and loved ones, who are reminded of him as he passes, and he reignites the will of the bugs around him just like he did when he first came to this land. All of it, all of it is to atone for everything. His mistakes in handling the Radiance, and most importantly of all, his mistakes in handling his own son. As he tells himself for the final time atop his throne as he dies into his next life, no cost too great. And in the end, he's finally able to put to rest his biggest mistake, the son he was forbidden to love, the son that he chose to chain up for an eternity. Eternity. A son who recognizes him in his final moments of clarity. Father? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Now that's a touching story. That's, that story over here is very touching. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, 
please consider to like, share and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate that you show support to the video. They, they are actually watch they are from the YouTube channel The Game Terrorist. Their videos are awesome. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. To be honest, the story that MadPat just told in that video is really emotional, very touching, and just heartfelt. Just really heartfelt. Thank you so much for the story. I really appreciate it. It feels you have so much emotion since we uh, I'm a huge fan, very huge fan. Thank you so much.